wanted to be a judge who knows just what is right and wrong and be good and be strong and on my swan up in the air I'm flying searching for justice can't you see me trying right is the reason I But I dispute that fight because I am the lawyer who's defending Mr. Mouse. Yes, but then, sir, I think you're wrong. You're very pushy, but because I am a good lawyer, I know what we can do. Let's hear the judge. Yes, because only our friend Klaus can solve it. I hear the wisdom coming from the gnomes now. And all together we have got the know-how. Because we are people of peace. It is a quiet day in the skies above the forest, quiet and still. But anyone who ventures down to the forest branches below will find themselves faced with a much noisier scene than they might have expected. Huh? Huh? And so, Your Honor, in regards to the defendants, they are, as the law clearly states, ipso facto bismo, I am to wit too witty behooved to say upon this occasion that I... Perhaps, my friend, you can speak to me more clearly. Yes, Your Honor, the fact is that these two beavers did, with willful intent and forethought, cause the destruction of personal property. In simpler terms, they've gone and chewed up all the roots of my treehouse and just about ruined it completely. I understand the charges. Let us now hear from the defense. Are you sorry that you did something wrong? You see, Your Honor, my clients meant no harm and didn't even know that they were doing anything wrong. When beavers are young, they must chew wood so that their teeth will become strong. This is their nature, Your Honor. Although the beavers may not have understood it, they were harming a very valuable treehouse with all of their chewing. Sharpening teeth is all very fine, but they must try not to do it on someone's home. Although they are young and mean no harm, I must still find them guilty. What will be their punishment, Judge? Our beaver friends are given 30 days to repair the damages, and from now on, they must promise to be very careful where they chew. Ah. <laughs> it's all ready for entry in the court records. Eh? That is beautifully drawn, Danny. I am most impressed by your court system of justice, my friend. My gracious, Cato, it is kind of you to say so, but I'm sure customs are not so different in your country. It's different, Klaus, although in Japan some things are the same as here. Trees, animals, and all living creatures are respected, even silly young beavers like them. <laughs> so in Japan, you respect trees? Yes, you may not realize it, Danny, but trees are the largest living creatures that can be found anywhere on this whole planet. Nothing is larger than a whale. Now think, my young friend, have you never once heard of the giant sequoias? Gee, I forgot about that. They grow up to be gigantic trees, sometimes over 250 feet tall, and some of them live over 3,000 years, I'm told. Well, look at us. We're almost the smallest creatures, and we live to be over 300 years old. I <laughs> sure would like to see a tree like that one of these days. It's possible that someday you will. Look how the moon dances upon the water. Yes, this is a most pleasant place for our spirits to grow peaceful by meditating. Meditating is one of your beautiful customs, Cato. Doesn't it almost look as if that tree had legs and was walking across the water? Legend tells us that is exactly what happened many years ago. It sounds like magic, Klaus. I'd like to hear more of the story. Then I'll tell it to you, Cato, although the story is very old. It begins before I was born. You see, once upon a time, that tree you see lived deep in the forest and was happy and content until one day there was a full moon in the sky. Hmm. Ah. Oh. Ah. 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 The 
the tree had fallen totally in love with the moon and was so desperate to follow her that he pulled himself up by the roots. He swore his everlasting love for her and began to dance in the path of the moon's glow. The tree came to a lake and saw the reflection of the moon in the water. He thought that somehow the lovely moon had fallen from the sky and was drowning in the lake. But when the poor tree put his foot into the water, the image of the moon broke into tiny pieces. At that moment, the tree decided never to leave the spot where he had last seen his love. And he stands in that spot to this very day. That is so sad. Sorry, Danny, I really disagree, as I think it is a happy tale. I think that the moon and tree still share a great love, and they protect each other from harm. After all this time, they are still gazing into each other's faces. What a beautiful thought. Ah, oh, lovely. Cato, I sure would love to hear you tell us about where you come from. I would like to be able to show you, Danny. Mmm, so you're inviting us to visit Japan sometime? No, Klaus. Some time has come now, as I must return. But I would be most honored if you two would join me. We will be having a flower contest of great importance, which you could help me judge, Klaus. Wow, Judge, can you imagine me in Japan? It'll be so exciting. When are we going to go? What am I going to pack? What am I going to wear? Take your soap and all the other important necessities. Right. One sack of soap port seeds coming right up. And also lavender. Because if we're going to be rubbing new noses far from home, then I'd like to smell nice as possible. We have many flowers in my land, but the ones you speak of are to me all unknown. Your world and ours have much we can learn from each other, my goodness, yes. Yeah! <laughs> we are flying south. Look, that is Kamoya. What's that over there, Kato? It is the Strait of Osumi. And that is the Isle of Osumi. My, it's all so peaceful. And uh, what is that, Kato? That's Nomayama. We call it the island of Mountain of Fire. You would call it a volcano, I believe. A volcano? Right now, it is quiet and resting, but Nomayama never really rests. And are we very far from your home? Oh, no. The next island is Nomashima. Look, Judge. I've never seen so many different plants and flowers in my whole life. Look, Danny, everyone is wearing a kimono. That is the traditional dress of the Japanese. Oh. Oh. I bet the gnomes back home would love kimonos. They are so beautiful. They are playing traditional music. It is a way of welcoming visitors to our home. It's all so peaceful and happy ah, yes. that my heart is lightened and... Hey, what's huh? that? <laughs> ah, please, be calm. What has happened? Kito, we are crying because there are some nasty creatures on our island and they are causing us great harm. Look, here comes your daughter, Okumi. I'm sure she can explain it better than I. <laughs> oh, father. <laughs> Calm down, my dear. Please do not cry. It will be all right. These are our friends, Klaus and Danny, and they will help us. Huh? Sure, we'll be happy to help, no matter how devilish and scary the creatures are, unless they've already left. Some horrible creatures suddenly appeared and are terrorizing all of the poor little silkworms. And they are stealing all our white mulberries. By chance, are there two of these wicked creatures? Real smelly and ugly? Yes, but my, what a lucky guess. <laughs> you must be. <laughs> but we have met them before, Okami. I'm sure you've run into two very unpleasant trolls. They're pretty rough guys. I am so afraid that they will ruin all of the beautiful gardens that we have worked so hard to create. Please don't let it worry you. Danny and I will drive them out of Nomashima. All right, everyone, let's stay calm. We'd be smart to act quickly. There's no telling what damage they're capable of. No doubt it would be wise to check on the harm they may have already done. That's right. Most wise, Chu, the old guard, will lead us all in to see the white mulberry forest. The trees had the bark ripped off and the white mulberry has disappeared. Oh, why, it's a disaster. Just look what they have done. 
They may be kind of dumb, but it still won't be easy capturing them. They're big and they got terrible tempers. But I'm determined we'll try our best. However, it is worse at the Silkworm Colony. They have been attacked and many, many have been kidnapped. This colony was once a masterpiece of hard work and a place of great happiness. They have taken the youngest worms since they weave the finest silk and they've ruined most of the silk that was finished. Well, I'll be hornswoggled if I do not find and punish both of them. Oh, I guess that means we'll have to be brave and actually find them. Stroke! 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 Mm. Power! Are we having fun yet or what? Absolutely, there's nothing more fun than hassling gnomes. Yeah, we sure are nasty stickers, Holler. <sighs> Let's get these mulberry leaves cooked up and have a picnic. Yeah, great. <clears throat> Boy, am I ever hungry. <clears throat> And nothing tastes better than stolen food. Mm. Hey, ain't I adorable in my apron, Pooley? Well, I think you'd look better if you weren't so darn clean. Right you are, Bean Brain. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh? <laughs> there, do I stink like an old mountain goat now? <laughs> yeah, you're filthy, that's perfect. Gosh, I'm just such a handsome troll. You must have something to eat before you go hunt trolls. Okami is right. It is best to work on a full stomach. While lunch is being prepared, Okami can show you our flowers. It would be a great pleasure. Now, if you would be good enough to follow me, please. Mm -hmm. uh, this way, please. We have special flower for every season. I am not sure which season is my favorite. And the elf says, not with my rabbit, you don't. <laughs> This is a Narcissus, isn't it, Okumi? Is that right? Yes, that's right, Danny. It is for the spring, like, for instance, the violet or the wildflowers. In the summer, the mallow, the wild rose, and the meadowsweet will bloom. In autumn, we can grow the plant that you brought, the sopo. And in the wintertime, you have the winter hellebore, which grows here. Is this not so? Yes, and also parsnip. And in the wintertime, we also grow bellflower. Gee, now that you've got soapport, you can grow just about every kind of plant in the world. Almost. But there is one flower that only grows on the mountain of fire. A flower like that would be the most beautiful treasure of our garden, honored by everybody. Then why don't you go and pick one and replant it over here? That's easy. No, no, Danny. The gnomes never go to the mountain. The volcano can erupt when you least expect it. If only we had that flower, we would have the island's most beautiful garden. Okami, you must leave that decision to Klaus, as he is the expert judge of flowers. Hmm? Oh. Yes, Okami, if I'm to be a fair judge of all the gardens, I have to be careful not to be influenced by your opinion of your own garden. Well, I'm not judging any contests. Okami, you can tell me how beautiful your garden is. Danny, you embarrass me, but I'm glad our minds are off our troubles. Kato, Kraus, quickly! <laughs> oh, my Kato, another terrible disaster has befallen us. The two creatures have appeared again, and they destroyed all the white mulberries and have stolen every last bit of silk we had. What? <gasps> I think we've waited long enough. We must do something now. Any idea where they might have gone? So sorry, but it is not certain. However, one gnome believes that he saw them both heading toward the mountain of fire. That is incredible. They are not afraid of a volcano? Holler and Pooley are too stupid to be afraid of pretty much anything. Roll, roll, roll your boat roughly down the street. Angrily, 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 life is but a nightmare. I feel hungry. That's no surprise. Huh? Now Don't you're a talk to me like that. Just roll. All I said was I was hungry. Yeah, 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 old brother. Looks perfect. Ready to test the door, Kato? All set. <laughs> <laughs> All set with the lavender and soap port. Danny, are the horses in a good position? Yeah, we're all ready for action. Great. Excellent. I only hope that it works. Kraus and Kato! What's the matter, Chew? Kato, oh dear, they've taken Okami. What are you saying? Where have they taken her? To the mountain of fire. Okami, my little child. We'll save her, my friend. You must stay calm. We'll get her back, Kato! <laughs> Let 
me go. Release me, I beg of you. Should we play with her? Yeah, let's play throw the mud on the gnome. Mm, sounds like fun. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my turn, my turn. Watch, here I come. No. <laughs> this is fun. Even when that gunk doesn't hit her. <laughs> she screams so good when you throw it at her. <laughs> I must go there and save her. The <laughs> volcano is active. It's just too dangerous. You could be killed. There is no life without her. They'll come back soon. Yes. We'll rescue your daughter and we'll bring her home. Mm. I thank you, Klaus. Mm -hmm. I see their boat coming now. Row, row, row your boat. Yes, right, shut up. up. And they'll be here quickly. Danny, you must lure them to the trap. Don't worry, Judge. I will. <laughs> <laughs> What's that disgusting odor? Uh, gosh, Holler, I think it's soap. Hey, hey, over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, wise guy, huh? Scared he can't get him. Gee, I was scared there for a second, but now I know it was only a no. Brilliant. Come and get me, Slowpoke. <laughs> here I am. What's taking you so long? You I gotcha, you. Huh? Oh. Yoo-hoo. Huh? Ooh. You missed him. Oh, well, he just got away for a second. I'll catch you Hurry. now. <laughs> huh? You know there, Holler? I don't see him. He's right there, stupid. <laughs> He's trapped. He's got nowhere to run. Spread out. <laughs> Try to outsmart me, will ya? Yeah. Hey, we're locked in. Hmm, no kidding. No, I guess you already knew, huh? <laughs> they're, they're both in the trap. Hurry. <laughs> Hungry. What? Well, how would you like a knuckle sandwich? Holler. Huh? Pooley. Who's that? If you don't tell us where Okami is hidden, we will never let you out of there. <laughs> and he does me never. If they have taken her to the Mountain of Fire, then she is in great danger. It's your last chance to tell me where you've put Okami. We won't tell, tell you. All right. Then you two have left me no other choice. Plan B. <sighs> It's awful! Had enough? Ma, are you crazy? Get some mud in here before I get completely clean! It's up to you two. Just tell us what we want. I'll tell you! Turn off the water, will you? Where is my child? Oh, she's at the barbecue, tied to a tree. All right, stop the water. They've had enough. And now you and I must hurry to the island. Danny, we'll need Henry. <laughs> Come on, Danny. How's it? Please stay here, Cato. We'll bring her back to you. Let's go, Henry. We'll bring her back. Don't worry. Whoa! It isn't going to be easy to find her in all this smoke. And lava is pouring out of the volcano. Careful now, Henry. Whoa, Henry! Whoa. There she is, Denny. I see her. Klaus! This looks like a job for Danny. Please hurry, Danny. Lucky I remembered to bring a knife. Mm, oh! oh. oh. oh me. is that the flower of the mountain, the one that's so rare? Yes, Danny, uh -huh. that's it there. I'll get it. 
It'll soon <gasps> blow. You must be careful. <laughs> more often. It is them. Do you see huh? them? Yeah. Dada, thank goodness. Father! Okami, you're safe. Mm. Oh. Okami, did they harm you? No, Father. We owe quite an oh. enormous debt to these two. Huh. Mm. Now then, you two leave and don't ever come back to Nomashima. Unless you want to take another bath, that is. We have more soap? <laughs> no! With all of this excitement, I almost forgot why we came to Nomashima. Mmm, but I have not. Although I have a feeling that we already know who will win the contest. I received this from Danny. Flower of the Mountain. Yes, Father, but in honor of those who saved my life, I will rename it instead the Flower of Friendship. Schlitzweitz. In the next episode, our friends Klaus and Danny will travel to Greece to witness the Gnome's Olympics scheduled to be held there. Everything seems to be completely ready for the great competition, but no sooner has it begun than everything starts to go wrong. The athletes begin to think that there is a curse on the proceedings and refuse to compete. Can our friends escape by the skin of their teeth and help save the Olympics?